Hi, Paul. So, Mark's our art director here at PRS, and we did a video a while back um, that ended up on YouTube and got some stupid number of views. And so we figured we'd do it again. You up for this? I think I am. All right, so what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about these tweaks that we keep uh, bringing the ones up. we don't want to talk about, but talk about, but don't want to talk about? Those tweaks. Those tweaks, that's nice. So what do you want to know about? Uh, well, um, I want to talk about the rules of tone. That's a... All right. It was this document written called The Rules of Tone. It was written on an airplane after decades of thought. And they were, it was called The 21 Rules of Tone, and I sent it to Tom Wheeler to help me edit it. And it basically said, if you pay attention to all these rules, you'll have a magic guitar at the end. And we started trying to implement those rules 10 years ago. And everybody knows we made a lot of changes to the nuts, to the tuning pegs, to the bridges, to the pickups, to all the finish, to all these other things. But nobody really knew why, and we wouldn't talk about it. And it says in that document what you got to do. It's in the safe. I hope it never sees the light of day. It's not for anything but the trade secret information for this company. But we started to try and do these things. You know, there are three stages, anything new it's venomously opposed to, and stage two is pretty much everybody's against it, and three is the accepted norm. So now we're into the accepted norm stage of it, and that's where the rules of tone comes from. I hope to God it never sees a light day and stays inside these company walls forever. It's been seen by, you've seen it, I showed it to you when it was written, I hope so. but I never gave you a copy of it. No. No. But you kind of remember what it said. I remember broadly. Yeah. Broadly. So, that came about from a conversation with your dad about physics. Yeah, basically. Um, I mean, broadly, if I broadly, 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 what it says is that guitars are completely subtractive. So, what I mean by that is that if you put this A string on ten different guitars, it's going to sound ten different ways. But the string, the same string, is trying to do its job. You know, the things vibrating so much that you can hear the guitar vibrating against the table, which is great. Um, so you put it on ten different guitars, it's going to sound ten different ways. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. So the string's not doing anything different, so the reason the guitars all sound different is because the guitars are subtracting different things. If none of the guitars are subtracting anything, it would sound exactly the same on all the guitars. So that is the very beginnings of the concept, and then there are all these things you have to do, and it turns out it works. But it took a long time to figure out whether it worked. So does that go back to your uh, statement about how the strings are the, the voice and the pickups are the, or the guitar is the voice yeah, and the yeah, pickups sure. are the microphone? Yeah, is no that... matter what mic you put on Barbara Streisand, she's not going to sound like Paul Rogers. It just isn't going to happen. So if you have a really tinny guitar in which the guitar is subtracting the mid-range and the bass out of the guitar, the pickups have to deal with that problem because, the, you know, it's hearing way more, high, way more high harmonics than it is hearing other harmonics. Right. So what happened was there's been all these changes to the guitars over the years, and we have shut up about it. But now, since almost all the guitars in the stores have these tweaks, we can start talking about it. And, um, and we've had a lot of questions from people about it over the years, but you yeah, know, we've, we've pretty we've much tight-lipped about it, right? We've been pretty vague. Uh, so the rules focus on some practical things like uh, materials, like wood choice and everything. I mean, it's down to that. And, I mean, I guess the wood right. choice we've always said was very important, which I don't think a lot of people thought with electric guitars. But. I've said this enough in clinics, so it's okay to say. We have a process here which <clears throat> gets all the resins to be crystallized and gets all the water out of the wood. So you can imagine a piece of wood that's set around 100 years, the resins in the wood are finally crystallized. And you can imagine a new piece of wood if the resins are liquid, it wouldn't resonate as well. And, you know, there's a general understanding in the music instrument business that old, dried woods are better for musical instruments than fresh stuff, right? Right. So this 
I mean, we've addressed all those issues. So everything in this guitar, we have gone way out of our way to get all the water out and get all the resins crystallized. It's not so easy to do. Uh, you know what our process here, it's kind of right. painful, but we do it. And we just don't take wood off the truck and use it. Yeah, I've talked to Paul Platts about yeah. the process yeah. that he goes through. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Paul Platts is our wood buyer here. That We've got three people, Hugh Wrights and Michael Reed and Paul Platts that do our wood buying. and We've built a lot of rooms to get this stuff to be musical instrument wood. Um, I mean, I guess the reason we're doing this is so that people are not wondering why we changed the tuning pegs and changed the nut and changed the bridge and changed the plating on some of the bridge stuff and changed the paint and changed the pickups and changed God knows everything. It's not a, it's a mystery anymore. We're trying to make the guitar sound better. I mean, that was really the, the effort, right? Well, it's been a continual process. I mean, I remember countless times of you pulling me into your office, making me listen to a guitar, and then coming back half an hour and say, play this, and it sounded different. It sounded louder. It sounded better. Right. And you had changed one tiny little one thing. One tiny little thing. Um, you know, for the longest time, I was searching around on my hands and knees in the dark looking and I couldn't find it. And I would come to your office and go, well, what about this and what about that and what about this? When the document got written, it was very clear what the path was to the things we had to do. But it was, you know, we weren't searching on our hands and knees anymore. It's interesting. This guitar, which is a prototype, I had not played before you walked in here with it, and it did everything that I would hope it to do just by plucking the A string, and it wasn't right. something we took up to PTC to um, tweak, right? So that would be the goal. You get a box at a store, you put it in the trunk, you open it up, and you can play a gig on it, and the thing's more alive than the other guitars you have. That would be the goal, right? Yeah. And, you know, if this is an example of that, this is the right time to do the video. Yeah. I remember... Was remember when we started using fish glue to glue the frets in because that's oh, yeah. what they used that's in the fifties. Oh yeah, that's great. And then we tried every little thing for what kind of glues to glue the neck joint in and what the glues to glue the fretboards on with. And you know, we were trying. You know, it's been a long effort, but I think we're getting to the point where that little string is making the guitar vibrate on the table. You're getting to the point where you're not going to get the guitar to vibrate much more. The string doesn't have enough weight. At some point, right. you're out of rope. Which would be good. Then we've done the best job we can. It's true. It's been a long, interesting yeah, process. I hope, <laughs> I hope I didn't make you crazy, Turner. I, I won't comment on that. <clears throat> I think he just said I made you, you just said <laughs> I made you crazy doing it. All right, so in the end, venomously opposed, kind of against, and it's the accepted norm. The norm, accepted you went norm. through the same process with me? That's right. That's great. That's good. Uh, so, what I think is interesting too is that these, uh, you've said that these rules are cumulative. Absolutely. So, all right. So, let's exaggerate it. Let's put rubber tuning pegs, rubber nut, rubber bridge on the guitar. How's the guitar going to sound? Pretty crappy. All right, great. Right. So, now we've got, you know, these tuning pegs, this nut, this bridge. It was pretty alive. Uh, it is cumulative. 